quite a period of time, most of the summer, I believe, they called, called and said, uh, your conveyors are completed. If you'd come up and, and get them, uh, that would be fine. They're ready to go. And I remember hooking the hay wagon behind the pickup truck and driving up to, to get them. And after we loaded them, uh, I said to, to Mr. Ruth, uh, what do I owe you? Oh, he, he turned, Joe, Joe started to say a uh, number, I don't remember what, and Mr. Ruth said, uh, the bill's been paid. And so uh, why do you think, why do you I didn't think know, that he I said didn't it? understand what he was talking about. And, uh, yeah, Joe didn't either. And well, and they stuttered a little bit. You know, we uh, got so many hours in this, and you know that, and you know how hard I worked at it. And uh, he said, no, the, the bill's paid. <coughs> I get to get your don't think, think of it. And he said to Joe, he said, your, your great grandfather was a runaway slave. His great grandfather helped him get his freedom. He the bills been paid. Mm. Okay. Well, now when you're here, yeah. 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 And let, later, later he he said, "Before you go, I want to show you my uh, a mail order." And he was very proud about that. He took me into a little back shop behind the, behind the shop in front. And he had things scattered around parcels, this and that. And he said, <clears throat> I've applied for a patent for it. And I'm afraid the new Holland Machine Company is going to steal it from me. Uh, I, they had an engineer that came in here the other day or a couple of weeks ago. And he said, I'm afraid they're, they're making an order and they'll have it made before I get it patented. And I think they probably did, but I'm not sure. But there was no question that he had invented that number. Wow, I mean, you telling the story, you know, here again takes me back and it makes me, you know, um, it took me back to that moment when you first heard it and like you, um, it, resonated i mean it you know i had this experience with it as well like wow um this connection between two families and you and joe didn't know the connection but mr billy did and so when you um, um heard those words and then you you knew the story of your family that was uh, who was involved in the underground railroad <laughs> Um, now, tell me, how did you come to learn that your family was associated with the underground? Well, that, that, that's, <clears throat> that's, that's another story. Uh, we, 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 had, we were, Dad had a pretty good operation, but we always had black families working for us. Mm. Uh, there, never, never anybody that wasn't black. And, uh, the uh, interesting that the, the McKim name, uh, the McKim family, uh, still worked for my dad. Mm. They worked for his grandfather, uh, and the family was still around. And it was a large family. Earl McKim uh, was the father. He had, had a son, Buddy, who was my age, and uh, and I think there were three girls. Uh, and uh, as as our as dad's business got got bigger and bigger, he, he uh, had some kind of agreement, I don't know what it was, but Earl was a partner. Mm. And, and uh, Earl, Earl brought in, uh, his, his, his biggest asset was that he had friends that were, he could convince to come and work in the mushroom plant. Mm. Uh, it was hard to recruit people that were dependable enough and sober enough and willing to work. Uh, strong enough, and Earl was good at that. And so for, I don't know how many years, but at least 10 years, maybe more, I grew up with the McKim family uh, 
lived just across the other side of the meadow, a hundred yards away. And uh, Buddy and I were good friends and uh, grew up together. So you, um, so you had the McKim family and then you um, also, so your family was also connected. So Buddy, in many ways, Mr. Buddy was, uh, not Buddy, Mr. Earl was um, great at human, we would call that now human resources and recruiting. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. could recruit and well, yeah, he, he, he was a good man. He, and and he, he didn't do all the work himself. I was trying to think of the, of the fellow's name. Uh, Uh, they call Slim Slim Johnson, I think his name was, and uh, Slim 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 was Slim was slick. They should have called him slick. But uh, as soon as he first he was married, and lived lived in a trailer up near Oxford. And he he was the nicest guy, uh, always telling stories, and uh, we didn't know as kids, but. Uh, but it didn't take Slim long after he got some money, he got a girlfriend. And then the next thing we knew, uh, Slim had bought, her, bought the girlfriend a trailer and he was living with her, not with his wife. Ah. And this, this, his kids with this, this was interesting. He said, well, 